Hey guys, and welcome to season two of Stepping Up. I'm your host, Daniel Dubois. For the past 11 weeks, we were able to explore and delve into the world of creativity and innovation. We featured so many persons from various fields and organizations who continue to step up and level up despite the odds of this ongoing pandemic. This season, we wish to continue shining light on the positivity, the young people of this country who continue to contribute and push boundaries. Our first interview explores the world of robotics, mechanical engineering, and STEM programming. Keegan and Shogun are two young men who say that one experience in Barbados changed their lives forever, and this caused them to make moves to start their own business called Optronics. Let's take in the interview. Today, we are with Shogun Rosary and Keegan Patrick, and they are the founders of Optronics. And let me tell you, I am privileged to be in their presence because I know probably two or three years from now, I'll be like, I knew these guys, I interviewed them before, <laughs> because just having to chat with them before we started our interview, it's just so amazing and interesting, the things that they're doing. So without further ado, I think I want them to introduce themselves in, um, individually and just to give a little bit of a feedback, uh, introduction or background information on them and the stuff that they've been up to. So guys, thank you very much for saying yes to being part of the show today. And I guess we'll start with you. Thank you very much for having us on today. Um, a little bit about myself. My name is Shogun Rosary. I'm a sophomore mechanical engineer major. I'm currently at the Howard University. Um, I'll just give a quick background about myself, uh, how I got involved in robotics. Would that be okay? Um, at the SPICE program in Barbados in 2016, I participated in a robotics course where we built an underwater robot. That was the first time I really got exposed to robotics. and it was at that program I realized that mechanical engineering was really something I wanted to do in the future. In 2017, I participated in the first global competition, which was an international robotics competition held in Washington, D.C. We participated with 164 other teams, and at that competition, we came 51st. And it was really there that I realized the great disparity between the technological capabilities of the youth in St. Lucia as compared to those abroad. And it was really there that the birth of the idea of Optronics came about. And when I came back to St. Lucia in 2018, I worked closely along with the Ministry of Education and CFYR um, to help integrate robotics into the secondary school curricula. And in 2019, I went to Howard University. Now I'm here. Cool. Launching their own business about to help anybody with an idea to create and innovate. And we're going to talk about my invention just a little bit later that they're going to help develop. But we're moving on to Keegan and we're going to learn a little bit more about him. Okay, thank you for having us. Um, my name is Keegan Patrick, a final year student at the University of West Indies studying mechanical engineering. Um, Zico and I, Shogun and I, shared a lot of the, the same background. Um, I attended SPICE with Shogun. We, ha we did that same robotics um, pro project together in terms of the underwater robot. We also participated in the first global robotics challenge together where we represented St. Lucia. Um, after that, after we both the idea of Optronics coming from that first global robotics challenge, um, we went our separate paths where Zico did his um, gap year and I went to study mechanical engineering at the University of West Indies. Um, fast forwarding a year or two, we are in 2020 and we have taken up the task of starting our own company, Optronics. Nice. Um, while we were speaking, you guys mentioned that it was really and truly the SPICE initiative in Barbados. What's the correct name for it? Um, a student program for innovation and science and engineering. In Barbados, in Barbados. that you guys went to SPICE, a nice name. Um, and it was there that they saw that you guys were really, in, um, I guess, inspired by the technology and the fact that, you know, you guys could actually do this. Um, speak to how that experience encouraged you guys to create Optronics and you could go right into the summer camp that you guys recently had. The SPICE experience really, w the reason that it really both the design me to become an engineer, at SPICE we did robotics really from the ground up. We used materials that 
you could find in any hardware store simple materials very very simple like all the motors will just normal motors not yet waterproof they there was nothing really pre-built and in terms of like the circuitry every, everything we did ourselves the wiring the programming it was really from the ground up and it really gave me an appreciation of how much work needed to go into any um, robotic device and but the thing is for me working on that program we, we really did like overnight many times at that robotics program sometimes we would spend maybe five six hours in the lab working on that go to go um, back to our dorms maybe two in the morning still have some work to do and then right next morning we'll be back on it and I realized that it was it was so easy for me to do it like I I didn't feel like I was being forced I it was something that I genuinely wanted to do and it was really there that I realized like okay this is cool and I, I love doing it and I, I wish this was something that was available to me back back home in St. Lucia and this really is one of the the again the founding um the founding things that that caused us to bring the optronic summer program to St. Lucia. But I'm, if you have to make it, you can make it again. Yeah, I mean, actually, actually, I have a, one of the kids that we used to um, create that robot in the first place, and I mean, it was one of the robots that I, I we considered using for the optronic summer program. But that one, it need, it requires a lot more intense like preparation and time. So we decided to go with something a bit more simpler that the students would be able to, you know, actually get their head, um, their heads around in. Keegan, so what were some of the tasks or what exactly did the children engage or come in? in um? Okay, so at the Optronic Summer Program, our idea was to have the students work on a project that's putting into society right now. So our project was to develop prototype um, a medical survey, service courier drone. So, um, in developing the drone, we got them all the, the, the kit that they needed, all the materials that we needed, and we, we had them put it together. Then we had them use their, um, the skills that they learned in their design classes to design an attachment that would be able to hold the, um, the medical supplies that we, we got from one of our medical facilities here in St. Lucia. So, um, going through the different parts of the drone, we bought the speed controllers, the frame, um, and the flight controller that would, we would go on to configure and program to tell the drone I want it to go from point A to point B. And you would have your radio system to com um, communicate to your, um, your laptop. And that, that's really the core components of our drone and our power distribution board, which is at the bottom. And we explained all of this to the students. We went through the physics that goes into the drone, how would the drone work. Um, the students really took it from there. We tried to um, do as little as possible ourselves to help let the students get that same, um, that same experience. experience that we had when we were younger. And the Spice, again, moving back, let's go back to the, the whole genesis of the camp and optronics. Why do you think um, St. Lucia is um, so behind when it comes to teaching science and technology into the classrooms? And I mean, we have, we've all done science and TD and stuff, but what's the thing that's missing in our schools to engage persons, to let them know that we could actually create our own things and become innovators and inventors? I think really to speak speak to that, I don't think it's just a problem here in St. Lucia. I think it's a problem Caribbean wide. And one of the the posts of the SPICE program, Dr. Cardinal Ward, they wrote a paper speaking about um, the development of the Caribbean and the way forward. And they also spoke, of, spoke a little bit about why the Caribbean is currently behind in terms of that development. And the difference between the, Car the Caribbean islands and the first world countries uh, is that um, many years ago the first world countries decided to you know, pull their resources together to focus on in um, increasing their STEM capabilities and they really invested a lot of governmental funds into improving the STEM capabilities of their countries. So they gave many 
stem corporations access to capital to to push these sort of initiatives. Meanwhile, um, Caribbean nations focus m more on what we traditionally have done in the past. Not to say that do those areas should not be focused on as well, but I don't think that back then they were looking to the to the long run to, and looking to where things were headed. They were they their sh vision was somewhat short-sighted in in that regard. I think. Moving forward, the traditional industries as well have to be supported, but greater emphasis has to be placed on um, the technological industries because it's something that you could really grow without needing skill, so to speak, because a lot of innovation in itself can be done based on the, div based on the ability of your human capital. It does not have to require large skill to be done. Sometimes, um, I mean, when it comes to manufacturing, so to speak, you need skill. But when it comes to innovation, it's about the human capital and the um, expertise that you have. So, and that's why we have Optronics, who is here to solve the problem and connect, or I should say, close the gap between the human capital and technology, yeah. right? And let us know a little bit more about that. And let us know some about your plans for Optronics and how you plan to do that. Okay, going forward with Optronics, we really want to focus on a few sectors that we're going forward with our business um, in terms of industrial process automation, device development, uh, app services, and our educational programs. Um, our educational programs we put at the forefront. That's the first thing we did because we believe um, we need to develop our human capital. These are the people that may if you future be working with Optronics is maybe persons that would be developing business in the technological industry that we're really trying to push and birth here in St. Lucia and the Caribbean. And for our business, on our business side, we want um, any medium-sized businesses that still using like traditional methods or um, manual methods, uh, we could come to their business and create a machinery, create processes um, to automate their process, processes using a machine or using new innovative technologies. Our device development segment would um, fall under small devices that we think that might um, increase the productivity of your work or of your business or an idea or product you wanted to prototype and bring to the market. Um, prototyping is something that's widely done in um, the first world countries. Um, when you're bringing your idea or pitching your idea to investors, you need a working prototype. You need something that you can say, this is what I want done and I want to have it mass produced. So with Optronics, we help you get your idea from being just an idea in your head to being something that's real life, something that's working and something you could say, hey, um, this is my machine and I want, if you invest in me, I could have this mass produced and this could be the next thing that's bigger than Amazon <laughs> yeah. and our app services is going on with our programming um, capabilities to help um, already businesses have anybody who has an idea could come to you and say okay this is the idea I have for the app mm -hmm. and I could give you that that intellectual property and say okay can you develop this for me so that's the idea of Optronics yeah. right same thing too if you have an invention or an idea that you had that you never had the capacity or you just don't know what's the next step you could check Optronics, <laughs> you know. So we had a very interesting um, discussion before we started the interview, and you know, I told him about my lifelong invention, and I'm inspired, and I'm happy that you guys are so young and so versed in your in your fields, and I can only imagine what the future is going to look like for you guys. So as we wrap up, can you just speak to personally what's next for you guys individually, and as a business, as a company, what's next, what you guys working on, what you're willing to share with us? Personally, um, I started school yesterday again for the next semester. Um, right now, Keegan and I are working, looking at how we can move forward with both school and our business. We're currently thinking of how we could manage our time best because currently we have some projects that we already have in the pipeline and we just need to start to flesh them out a, a bit more in terms of how exactly we will move forward. So those really are my plans for the future. 
and he's being very careful to not say what they're working on eh? <laughs> so several times you're like no we can't talk about it we can't talk yeah. about it but you know what all the best yeah thank you you understand i know you guys will be amazing or whatever you'll decide to do Continue. I think you may have to forgive Sugar a little bit with not being able to disclose anything because we actually had to sign a, a, nice, a non disclosure nice. form. Nice. Um, but also, we're just trying to work with our schedule because we will be going back to school and have some online close courses, but we will be working tightly with our schedule for work and school. Um, personally, that's, that's what's moving forward with me, trying to make sure we're able to develop up trainings. We have our few projects that we're working on, um, taking up the role of technical advisory services and um, trying to do work on our, our first project, our first device project that um, a company wants us to build for them. Billionaires in the making, I'm sure, <laughs> and they know it very well, so and they don't deny it and they don't shy away from the fact that they understand that there's a need and what they're doing is very important in St. Lucia and globally. So just one person, just tell me how we can contact you. You could follow us on Instagram or Facebook. On Instagram, it's at Optronics underscore. On Facebook, it's Optronics. So guys, these are the ones who will come and take your idea, run with it, and make it a reality. Thank you so much. All the best, fortune, and favors in all your endeavors. And thank you so much. Guys, we'll be right back. Back to school is finally here. Jay, you have your hand sanitizer. You have your disinfecting wipes. I even gave you an extra mask and this one you can put it on. Jaden wanted a COVID-19 rule. Wash your hands, wear all of your mask and six feet away. Ensure your children are provided with a personal hygiene kit to carry and use on a daily basis. Items like hand sanitizer, wipes and extra masks should be in there. Remember, if your child does not feel well or is showing any flu-like symptoms, keep him or her at home. Ensure your child wears a mask at all times, especially upon the arrival at school. Classrooms have been prepared to ensure physical distancing. Teachers and support staff will guide students during the day to wash their hands. And all surfaces, desks, chairs, door handles and washrooms will be cleaned regularly. By now, administrations of schools would have communicated the new schedule specific to your child's grade or form. Lunches will be consumed at the student's desk or outdoors while respecting physical distancing. As we start the new school year 2020-2021, we are all adjusting to the new normal that was introduced by COVID-19. I beg of all of you, let us observe the guidelines as prescribed by the Ministry of Health. Our children, teachers, educators, stakeholders, we all depend on one another to do the right thing for the sake of our children and the sake of our nation. Let us all be vigilant and observe the protocols as defined by the Ministry of Health. Welcome back. So as you heard, Optronics is up and running and ready for business. I'm hoping that they'll have enough time to build that prototype for the invention that I've had on my mind for many, many years. Anyways, all the best and thank you guys so much for stepping up. Now for Link Up, we chat with a good friend of mine, Chanel Justin, a teacher, writer and drama enthusiast and a recently published author for her master's program where she studies exceptional learners. Chanel was a recipient for one of the Ministry of Education's Equip 2019 scholarships. So we chat about her schooling, being away from home during the unfolding of this pandemic, and her experience coming back and going through the process of quarantine. Let's take a look at the interview. Hello Chanel and how are you? Hi Danielle, thank you so much for having this meeting with me. I am very privileged to be here. <laughs> Well, I'm, thank I'm happy that you said yes, but you know, I really wanted to zone into your story because I think Chanel has a very interesting story. Um, the fact that she went to Canada and she was actually part of the whole, um, seeing the whole pandemic, you know, happen. You know, it happened in a lot of phases, but I would say from the beginning, right? Yes, from um, the beginning. So let us know first, let us know a little bit about your scholarship from Equip and the Ministry of Education and what you guys are really doing and up to right now. 
Okay, so I applied for um, the scholarship with Equipped, and it is a master's degree program in exceptional learners. Um, there were three, three of us, and um, this program ran for a year and a half. And the final leg, which is the half of the year, I will be competing it in St. Lucia because, well, COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's, good. it's a good feeling to be home, right? It is a wonderful <laughs> feeling to be home because I saw this pandemic unfold before me. I was home in December and... In January, that's when I started paying attention because I realized things can get really bad here when I'm not home, I don't have my family. So it was a lot to think of. So Shida, let us know a little bit more about your program, Exceptional Learners, and give us some more information about the paper that you recently published. And what does it really mean to be published? My program is a master's degree in exceptional learners and what it is really is special education and in Canada it is called exceptional learners because they are trying to remove the stigma associated with children that need special um, assistance in class and so it is termed exceptional learners and I think that is the that's the best way to go because um, every child is special when you think about it really. So this program is designed to meet the needs of children that um, have emotional disorders, intellectual dis disorders and learning disabilities and any child that basically needs extra help in the classroom. So that is what I am studying and I'm looking at a lot of research, reading a lot of um, up-to-date data I would say um, and um, research that has been conducted on various areas and various disorders. So that's what it really covers and um, based on my program I was able to publish my first academic ch um, paper and <laughs> I'm very proud of that I honestly did not think that this is something I would have been able to achieve while doing the program but I was I was um, approached by my academic advisor who encouraged me to stick to um, the topic which was um, arts education so my paper is entitled um, enhancing school connectedness among vulnerable youth through arts education, considerations for education systems in St. Lucia. And what this paper um, is about, it studies how arts education can be used to enhance school connectedness among vulnerable youth. School connectedness is basically um, the belief that a child has that the school that they attend, that there are adults that care about their well-being and about their learning. So what art education does, um, it enhances the school connectedness. And I know of this because I've been involved in the arts and so on. So because of my own experience, I decided, well, I know what art education did for me, so I should explore something that I'm familiar with and see how it can reach those vulnerable students. And hence the paper. Right. So how do you plan to contribute when you finally complete your paper, um, well, I say your your program, because, you know, because of COVID, you had to run home. And <laughs> praise God, you know, you can run home. Yes. <laughs> in lack of a better word, but run home. Yes. And I think in as much as a lot of people say a lot of things about people come home, I'm like, it's home. Come home. home. Yes. Home like, you know? is home. Yeah. And um, what I would really like to do, based on my experience that I've had in Canada and doing my um, program, is focus on research. We really need to change the way we do things in terms of our education system because a lot of the programs, methods, and practices that we have implemented in the education system is based on research that have been done in the UK, Canada, and the US. And so their systems, their findings are based on their findings, their culture, their society, their economic, and so on. So we really need to do our own research and develop our own programs. And that's what my paper did. I did research and I, um, I included St. Lucians and um, foreigners as well in the paper and developed our own practices that can be used based on our system. So I think that's, what we, that's the direction our education system should take, more research, find out what our needs are, and then develop practices to meet those needs. What do you think is the greatest misconception um, St. Lucians have when it comes to exceptional learners? And... Um, Exceptional learners, you could correct me if I'm wrong, is you have the spectrum of those who um, may need extra help and then you have those who are gifted. So just let us know a little bit about that and let us know what you think is that misconception that we have as a country and how your program and the paper that you wrote can help solve some of those problems or change the misconceptions. I think the misconception we have in St. Lucia is that once a child is struggling with reading and math, that this child is stupid or the child is unable to learn. We really need to understand that every child is gifted and talented. We have to figure out what that is 
and groom and nurture that talent in that child so i think that's the misconception we believe that once a child has difficulty reading and difficulty in math then it's a lost case and there's also a lot of emphasis on academics and much not on not much emphasis on practical skills you know and talents and um soft skills so we have a situation where children are not necessarily gifted academically but they are talented creatively and we really really need to tap into our dreamers our creative art students the the dancers the musicians they are the ones that can reshape everything the face of our country you know so i think that's a misconception and we have not given arts education the attention that it deserves because when i delve into what arts education has to offer it is so much and it's not just for children even teachers can benefit from it yeah. you know so we have a lot of work to do and yeah, there's a moving power with drama and you know we kind of bias when it comes to drama naturally but there's a moving power about drama and and drama challenges you on so many levels and being able to uh, expose students to that at a very young age um, not only helps them to be creative, but it's, it, it focuses on teamwork, how to express, um, how to do things differently or to go about solving problems differently. So as we wrap up the, the side of the academics, as you know, we've delved into that and we want to focus on another aspect. Um, personally, how do you plan to contribute? I know, of course, you have to teach and come back and, con and give back to the country, but, you know, personally, um, you could possibly let us know what is it that you want to do to give back? How do you plan on solving some of the problems you have identified? I am very much interested in using drama, the main tool, although I have experience in other arts areas. Um, I am working with Drama Can, and we have been looking at um, play therapy and um, playback theater with adults. And I want to bring it to the secondary school students. And I'm also hoping to do some work with the boys shooting center you know whenever when i was writing my paper i always reflected on the work that drama can started with them and when we started that work we were not ready we were not ready and studying it now i'm beginning to understand what the way we should approach this and i think that's where i would like to to start my work i would like to link up <laughs> with the um, boy training center and um, write a proposal and start some work with them because i think yeah we can start a program there and see where it goes from there because when you think of vulnerable students they are the ones that come to my mind yeah um as you said you mentioned that we were not ready can you just share what it what it what it was and for me just and i can imagine and it's it's strange we haven't had this conversation personally as to how um you studying that aspect prepares us to now be able to go back into that voluntary work um when we when we went to boys training center we realized that um you met boys who are at different levels emotionally and the they, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. Chanel, I think I'll take it over to you. But we yeah. just weren't ready to catch them. Right, we were not ready we to meet ready them. Yet. Where they were intellectually, yeah. emotionally, mentally, physically, physical health. Oh my gosh. Drama education contributes to physical health. And not just drama, arts education, dance teaches coordination, hand-eye hand, hand -eye coordination. You know, so many areas. And that's one thing my paper touched on, that arts education meets the developmental needs in terms of the intellectual needs, physical needs, emotional needs, and social needs. It's, yeah. it's all encompassing, you know? So um, I think that knowing that now, I will be able to approach these boys knowing that they have some disadvantages and I can help them, you know, navigate and using their strengths. Nice. Thank you so much for that, Chanel. And you know, you know, anytime I have to come and end the conversation because anytime we get into it, it's like we'll go on and on, on and yes, on. Yes. But you know what? Thank you so much for your contribution and stepping up and congratulations on being able to publish your paper. Thank you. Um, I remember when we had to always um you had to note um what's the proper way to note out to cite. To cite, cite. it's just Sorry. in twenty twenty. <laughs> and this is this means so much to me because we know what twenty twenty is all about. Yeah. So I am just happy that I was able to do something within this very challenging time with mm -hmm. the help of the government, of course. <laughs> As we wrap up, 
you had to come home on a big jumbo plane. Oh, yes. What was that process like being able to travel? And, you know, we, we don't want to go through the depressing stuff because we know that 2020 <laughs> has depressing aspects and dark sides to it. So let us know what it was like for you to come home. Let mm -hmm. us know what the travel um, experience was like. And, you know, going through, she went through quarantine, guys. So she's got, she has to tell us a little bit about the quarantine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So it took me two days to get to my home country and two weeks to get to my physical home because I was in quarantine. Um, I must say it was very scary traveling to, um, to my home country because there were no direct flights from where I was in Canada. I was in New Brunswick and there was no way to get a direct flight. So I had to travel through the U.S. to get home and I made like six stops along the way. And when I got to the U.S., it was like there was no pandemic. And I can understand why the numbers are so high because there was very little social distancing. Even on the plane, there was no social distancing. So I was so scared. I had to adapt to wearing a mask for the entire flight, which was very challenging. Um, and in Canada as well, masks were not mandatory, but social distances w were in effect. And the airports were empty. So it's almost like I came from an area where... They took this pandemic very seriously, social distancing, mask wearing, and so on. And then when I got to the U.S., it was like another, another story. story. Like, it was just night and day, you know. And when I finally got home, I was so happy. And then I went through the pre-arrival process. And when I went through that process, I realized why our numbers are so low. We have a very, very effective way of controlling the spread of this virus. I was in um, customs before I got in, before I got out. I was in customs for probably an hour and I was required to sanitize my hands at least three times, you know, before I entered various different zones in the airport. And I thought that's really good because that's what, that's how the virus spreads your hands and you know, well, you're sneezing and so on. And I also had to present um, a negative COVID test. So for me, I felt so secured and then I felt like, okay, we have this under control in St. Lucia and I felt safe and I was just happy to be home. In quarantine, I was treated so well. I, I, I felt like... When I was in quarantine, you forgot special. you got some police escorts. <laughs> oh yes, the police escort. Listen, this was so exciting. When I got to um, the, the bus... The driver um, told the, the police that they're ready. And then when we were heading down, it was just the sirens and we got a lot of attention, people waving. But for me, it <laughs> was exciting. Home. It was like, welcome home, welcome home. It was exciting for me. And I didn't mind. I didn't feel like I was a criminal or anything. To me, it yeah. was, I'm here. Everyone is welcoming me. <laughs> and I got this special treatment. And it took us less than an hour to get to Castries. So yeah. I enjoyed that. And when we got to Bay Gardens, which is where I was, I said, let's go again. Let's go again. <laughs> and they all laughed, you know. I was just happy to be home and yeah. the food was well prepared i got called um during lunch and dinner to ask if i wanted fish chicken or beef i mean that's that's world treatment to me and um my temperature was checked twice a day um i kept myself busy by reading writing um i was entertained with the television i had access to the internet so the only challenging part for me about quarantine was not having my family i was there for two weeks by myself but I know how to keep myself entertained, so nice. yeah, it, it it was fine. <laughs> I could do it again. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do quarantine again? <laughs> Maybe with somebody. <laughs> Well, Chanel, thank you so much for joining us here at Stepping Up. And you know, you have an amazing story to tell. And you're almost done with your program. So I wish you all the best, fortune and favors moving forward. And thank you so much and continue to keep stepping up. Thank you so much, Daniel. There are so many amazing things happening in St. Lucia right now. Everywhere you turn, so many persons are stepping up. As a country, our citizens are so full of talent and have so many interesting stories to tell. That's our objective of Stepping Up, to capture and share as much as we can about our people. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. If you know anyone in your community who is stepping up or doing anything amazing, feel free to send me an email at steppingup758 at gmail.com. I'm your host, Daniel Dubois. Once again, thank you for joining us. And don't forget to keep stepping up.